Many people are looking for the refined, polished concrete look, but grinding and polishing the concrete the traditional way just isn't possible. So we're going to show you how you can achieve something very similar to a polished concrete slab by using our designer metallic epoxy. We put this floor down with our silver metallic epoxy. We added some modeling to it with an alcohol technique, and we finished it off with our high wear satin urethane. And you can see that it left us with a beautiful, beautiful finish. We're going to show you how this was done. So we did all of our prep, we have the floor primed, and now we're ready to start mixing up our metallic epoxy. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to open up our A and we're going to mix our pigments in the A part. So it's simply just a matter of pouring it into our mixing container. Now because we're doing uh, one coat or one color so we did all of our prep, we have the floor primed, and now we're ready to start mixing up our metallic epoxy. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to open up our A, and we're going to mix our pigments in the A part. And because we're doing just a one color combination, uh, we're able to apply the uh, epoxy just a little bit thinner than we would normally do if we were doing a multicolor combination. So uh, for this particular floor, we're just going to be mixing up a gallon and a half kit. So that means we're going to pour in about half of our 16 ounce jar of pigment. So that's all we need right there. And then we're going to mix this titanium pigment with our drill and our paddle for about 10 minutes because we want to make sure that this pigment is thoroughly mixed before we add in our B. Alright, so that's all we need to do to mix our A, so that was uh, about 10 minutes or so. And because we're only using one batch of epoxy for this floor, uh, we're able to mix up our A and proceed immediately to mixing up our, or, or adding the B component to it. However, if we were doing a much larger floor and we needed multiple kits of epoxy for this floor, we would go ahead and prepare the pigments in the A part for each of the batches of epoxy in order to save time uh, once we start the install. But in this case, we're ready to go with our B component, which is the hardener. It's a two to one mix, so we have a gallon of our A already in the bucket. Now we're gonna add a half gallon of the B, like that. Wanna make sure we get it all out. All right, and now we're going to mix this for a couple minutes. All right, so that's mixed, and now we're ready to apply it onto the floor. All right, so now that we have our product mixed, we're gonna pour it out onto the floor, and again, uh, we're still gonna do the ribbons. 
even though this is just one color application on this floor, we're still going to pour out some ribbons. All right, so we want to drain the epoxy out of the bucket, but we do not want to turn the bucket over and leave it while we're working uh, because what could happen is some of the unmixed resin that's maybe in the bottom of the bucket where the mixing paddle didn't quite get, uh, that could end up on the floor. You would have unmixed resin that would probably not get hard and would stay soft permanently. So we want to uh, get everything out of the bucket that we can, but we don't want to leave it on the floor. So I'm going to set the bucket aside and then we'll start with the process of um, moving everything around with our um, squeegee. So again, we have all of our tools that we need set up. I'm wearing spike shoes because I have to walk in the epoxy. I've got my flat blade squeegee. I've got my 18 inch 3 8 snap roller and I've got a roller that I'm going to use for the edges. So very simply here, we're going to take this silver metallic epoxy. We're going to start moving it around. I'm going to get it close to the edge, but I'm not worried about getting it exactly to the edge. That's what we're going to use this small four inch roller for. So again, I'm not putting any pressure at all on this squeegee. I'm just letting the weight of the squeegee move the epoxy around the floor. Very, very easy to install this type of a floor with one color because we're not having to worry about blending two different colors together. So now it's just a sim simple matter of uh, just moving the epoxy around the floor. Spike shoes can be uh, a little bit slippery and sometimes a little bit tricky uh, to walk in. Um, so we're just walking at a very slow pace, very deliberate step so that we don't slip as we move this epoxy around the room. And again, we're putting this down um, at about 100 square feet per gallon on this particular style of floor with this one color. And what we're trying to do is uh, give us the look of polished concrete. So we'll just continue moving this around. We're working with just one batch at a time here. And you can see this epoxy just really, really flows very easily. All right, now what I've done here is I've left a little puddle uh, of product there purposely because uh, I'm ready now to um, start rolling the epoxy. So these roller covers, whether it be the four inch or the 18 inch, they really soak up a lot of product. So I leave a little puddle for myself to get my roller just really, really saturated before I start to roll. And then I can come in here like this and then start moving it right up to the wall. And any little uh, puddles that I have close to the wall, well, that's the material that I'm going to use to fill in the gap between the field of the floor here and the wall. Now, if I was doing um, a really large area, I would probably have this four inch roller on a, on a pole, but because this is you know, just one pretty small room, um, I can just do it easily like this. All right, so I'll roll about half the floor here with the edges. I'm gonna do the same thing with my 18 inch roller. I'm just going to kind of roll it in this puddle here. 
I'm gonna get it super, super saturated with product, just like that. And now I'm ready to start rolling the rest of the floor here. You'll hear that little sticky sound at first and as the roller gets more and more saturated with material, you'll hear it and you'll also feel it gliding on the surface. So we really do recommend using these 18 inch rollers. It's just uh, so much easier and so much faster to install the epoxy. It puts it on um, just real even and just makes the job uh, go that much quicker. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit more edge work here. this material we'll push it up to the edge here All right, so the edges are all done now. We'll go ahead and continue on rolling out the larger part of the floor. And this initial roll is just to kind of help move some of the material around to get it um, kind of into place. We'll come back with an additional roll in a minute. Okay, so there's our initial roll, and the roller marks are very obvious in the floor, and we would expect that. Um, those will go away once we finish rolling the floor. So they'll stick around probably for, um, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, so don't be alarmed if you see that. Uh, every time we roll the floor, we're turning up the pigment, and so therefore you're going to see um, the roller marks. So don't be alarmed by that. Um, they will eventually dissipate. So let me get rid of this squeegee here. And then I'm gonna give the floor another roll. And I'm probably gonna go in the opposite direction here this time.
right, so this is looking pretty good here. Okay, so two to three times is what we recommend you roll the floor. In this case, um, I don't see any bare spots at all. I think we have the epoxy out on the floor uh, fairly evenly. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're going to let this settle out. Uh, we're gonna uh, let these roller marks uh, dissipate. And then we're gonna come back and we're going to spray this with uh, alcohol, which is gonna add a really, really nice design element um, to the floor. So we're gonna let this sit probably for about 30 minutes and then we'll come back and check it to see if it's ready for the alcohol technique. All right, so this is our silver floor, and we're trying to mimic the look of a really nice, fine, refined, um, polished concrete floor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of a design element to the overall look here by spraying some denatured alcohol on the floor. It's gonna give some more variation, a little bit more of a model look, like it's a really nice uh, polished surface when we're done. So the way we do that is we take some denatured alcohol that's in a spray bottle like this, and we simply just start misting it out onto the floor. Actually, not quite a mist at this point. We're actually looking for some larger droplets out on the floor. And so you see, as soon as it hits, it creates a little pattern in the concrete as some of the pigment starts to separate out. Now, a little added benefit to doing the alcohol technique is that if you have any uh, bubbles on the surface, this will pop any of the bubbles. If you get any of those little comet streaks in the floor, which is caused by dirt getting trapped in with the pigment as it moves, this will help to uh, move those out as well. How much alcohol you spray on the surface really is dependent on the look that you want. I'm gonna do what we call a full spray here. So I'm gonna make sure that I've covered the entire surface with the alcohol. Timing is essential uh, with this. If you do it too soon, what happens is all of the epoxy continues to move and your um, pattern that you create with the alcohol will just go away and dissipate. If you wait too long, the little divots that you create by the alcohol hitting the surface, uh, they won't fill back in. So what we do is we come back in and we do a check uh, in an inconspicuous spot somewhere at about the 30 minute mark. Wait 10 minutes. If the pattern has held that long, then you know you're good to go. If it dissipates, we're gonna wait another 10, 15 minutes. We're gonna sample it again. Uh, and once we see that the pattern is holding, then we're gonna go ahead and uh, spray out the floor. So you can see already just in a couple minutes here what's happened to the surface. It's creating this really, really uh, cool uh, design element to the floor. So I'm gonna add a little bit more here. So you notice as I'm spraying here, in order to get this type of a spray pattern with this spray bottle, I'm pulling the trigger just about maybe halfway. And that's allowing this little spurting action to happen here. And as I walk in my spike shoes, I'm very careful to lift up my feet so that I'm not dragging and creating any spike marks in the epoxy. And I'll just work my way off the floor. 
Uh, we'll let this settle in and we'll come back tomorrow and we'll be able to show you the finished result of our design that we created with the alcohol and it'll be time for us to put on our high wear urethane. All right, so we're back at our floor here. You can see how beautiful this silver metallic epoxy turned out and really just a nice added design feature by doing the alcohol uh, technique on this floor. However, at this point, when you come back to your floor, you might find that you have some uh, bubbles or imperfections in the floor that you wanna get rid of before you proceed on to the urethane coat. For example, on this floor here, we did our best to keep this room clean. However, the reality is that you still might end up with things like this, a little bit of dirt and debris that's got into the epoxy. There's some other small little uh, pinhole size bubbles and maybe even some a little bit larger. Uh, that we can see as we move around the floor. So this is the time that we take care of those and the process really is very simple. We're gonna use a floor buffing machine with a 60 grit sanding screen on it. We're gonna go over the floor and this is going to sand down any of these bubbles or other imperfections that we might have in the floor. Now, you might find that when you come back to your um, job that uh, you have bubbles pretty much over the whole surface. And uh, we're not gonna go into all of the reasons why you get those now. We have information on that on our uh, website. You can also check out our online uh, troubleshooting guide. But the reality is you might have them. If you have them over a large surface, you're probably gonna wanna uh, sand out the bubbles with uh, some kind of a floor uh, buffing machine like this. But if you find that maybe you have them only just in one certain little area, a very small area, then you can absolutely use something like a palm sander to sand them out. You could even use a hand sander to um, sand those out. It'll do the job just fine. But in this case, uh, we see that we have these little bubbles pretty consistent over this floor. So I'm gonna go ahead now and uh, sand them out. We say to use a sanding screen because the sanding screen will sand down the high spots without really gouging the floor. Uh, we don't wanna gouge the floor because that might show up after we put the urethane on. So we're using these sanding screens. Uh, if you're doing it by hand, you could use any of the sanding screens that you would use for uh, sanding down drywall. Uh, but for these larger uh, machines like this, uh, you can pick one up at your local uh, rental center. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to go over the floor. Now, the way you know you've got it sanded down is in a spot like this. You can see how the um, bubble has turned to a little white dot. When I rub my finger over that, it's flat and smooth. It's left that little uh, white dot. And that's how I know that I've been able to sand out the bubble. So we're gonna end up with that type of a look over the whole floor. We're dulling out the surface as we're doing this, and that's fine. Uh, the color of the floor will pop right back once we add our urethane coat onto the floor. There may be some spots where uh, you have some larger bubbles. You may have to uh, work that just a little bit more. Again, we're not trying to remove any of the epoxy. You can see there's barely any dust that's uh, being kicked up on the floor. Generally, it's a pretty quick process when you use the 60 grit sanding screen. I'm just gonna go ahead and sand out the whole floor and get it ready for the urethane. Now there's some other spots here. Uh, you can see like here, for instance, this was a little bubble. Now I've sanded down the bubble, it's gone. 
However, you can see these little comet tails here. So that's caused by the dirt, which was drug along uh, here, caused this little bubble. You got that little streak of pigment there. Now that's not gonna go away, but the bubble that's at the end of it will. So again, it just really highlights the need to really put forth our best effort to keep the uh, workspace and the floor itself really, really clean during the installation because dirt will have an effect on the floor. A lot of people think that those streaks are caused by um, perhaps unmixed pigment, uh, which could be the case, but usually not. It's usually caused by dirt that's gotten onto the floor. Um, so we just really want to keep our workspace really clean during the installation. So again, here's a spot where I see a few little larger bubbles. So I'm just gonna work on that a little bit more. All right, so we've gotten this sanded down pretty good. I think we've been able to take care of all of the, the bubbles here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put up the machine and then we're going to get this uh, floor cleaned up and ready for the installation of the urethane. So keeping a clean surface is essential all the way through the entire process of installing one of these designer metallic epoxy floors. We've just done a very light sanding on here with a 60 grit sanding screen to remove some bubbles and some of the debris that's gotten caught up in our epoxy floor. There is a tiny bit of dust that is on the surface. We need to get that off and get this floor clean before we can install the high wear urethane. Now, if I was going to do the urethane say tomorrow at this stage, um, I could probably use a mop with uh, water, a damp mop, to get up the dust, but I want to go ahead and get this urethane done now. So I'm going to use denatured alcohol to uh, clean the floor uh, because the denatured alcohol will actually evaporate off of the surface very, very quickly, which is going to allow me to install uh, the urethane. So very, very simple. I'm going to use um, like a microfiber pad like this. You can pick one up at your uh, big box store. Uh, and I'm going to use some denatured alcohol. I'm just going to pour a puddle of it there on the floor. And then I'm going to take my, um, my uh, pad here and I'm going to just give it a nice wipe. And that's going to pick up any of this um, dust that we just created. could, if I want to, 
um, take a shot back and vacuum the floor and then do the denatured alcohol. But really, there's just a little bit of dust that's been created. So I'm going to be able to get it all just with the microfiber uh, pad here. Pour a little bit more down. All right, so that's about all we would need to do on the floor uh, in order to get it ready. Um, I would let this dry, which is gonna take really just a couple of minutes. I'd assess the floor. If I felt like I needed to do it one more time, I could. Uh, but once everything was dry, we're ready to put down the high wear urethane. So we're trying to mimic the look of really high-end polished concrete here with this look. And we've used our silver designer metallic epoxy to do that. Now it's time to put on our high wear urethane and we're gonna do it in a full satin finish. It's the most durable finish that we have. It's the most durable finish that you can install. And it's actually going to give us just the right luster that we're looking for on this floor. It's gonna take away that really high gloss, but it's gonna give us a very, very beautiful, warm, rich looking sheen across the floor. So we've already gone ahead and mixed up our high wear urethane. Now we have a whole nother video that we'll put down in the description that you can see of actually how to mix up the high wear urethane. We've already got it ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna stir it up just for a couple seconds here, just so that aluminum oxide that's settled in the bottom can get suspended again in the material. And then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pour some into my application tray. We're going to set this off to the side and as always we're going to start with our edges. So we're going to get our roller saturated with the product and again I'm going to come in here and this is a product that you can uh, really uh, roll a lot. Uh, you can't over roll this product, it's nearly impossible. Um, so we're going to roll it in smooth thin coat. Um, this goes down at about 500 square feet per kit. So it's a thin coat. And this is going to give us just a beautiful, beautiful um, satin finish on the floor. So we'll get this edge done here. And that's perfect. So I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So I've got a little section here of maybe about um, 20 feet by uh, 10 feet done with my edges. And now it's time for me to start filling in the rest of the floor. So of course we're using an 18 inch roller. Uh, it's the professional way to do it. It's a 3 8 snap roller. We provide them in our toolkit. When we're using a new roller, the initial um, dry roller is going to soak up a lot of material. So we just want to get it nice and saturated, but we don't want it dripping. So we're getting the excess off and then we're going to come in here and we're going to do um, a section of maybe like four feet by four feet or five feet by five feet. We're going to get the material in place here and then we'll roll it a number of times to even it all out. And because this is uh, it's not a self-leveling product like the epoxy, it's uh, not going down thick like the epoxy did. This is a very, very thin mill coating. We're going down at about three to four mils here on the floor. You're going to hear that tackiness, that stickiness of the roller. That's exactly what you want to hear. Uh, we are not putting this down to level out the floor. Uh, we're not using the thought process that if we put down a nice thick coat of this high wear urethane that it's better. The opposite is actually true. We're going down thin because that's going to give us the most durability out of this product. So we're maintaining that 500 square feet or so coverage rate.
Now I can come around on this side. I can roll it in the opposite way as well. And we're just making sure that we have full coverage of the floor. And once we're satisfied that we do, we can come back in here, dunk our roller again, and then start the next little section. Now it's okay if we roll back into this part here that we've already done. We're not adding any more material to it, but we're rolling back into it just again to even out the surface. Again, it's nearly impossible to overroll this product. So this, um, this will give you a little bit of a workout as you install this product because we need to put a little bit of effort into it to keep it thin. Um, if you're just gliding on here and you're flying through this, you're probably putting it down way too thick. So we're actually going to work it into the floor, putting pressure on our roller, and we're just continuing to go over the same area a number of times, ensuring that we have full thin coverage on the floor. Now, I'm not wearing any spike shoes as I'm installing this. However, I do have them just set off to the side in case I need to walk in it, in case I miss a spot. Um, I'm going to constantly be looking around at different angles, uh, different lighting, uh, just to make sure I haven't missed anything. If I look back and I see that I missed a spot or I feel like I need to roll a spot a little bit more, I'll put my spike shoes on, I'll walk out into it. But for now, uh, with this extension handle, I'm able to uh, reach everything. I need to add a little bit more to our mixing tray. So again, that aluminum oxide, it settles. We're going to whip it up here with the drill for a few seconds. And then we're going to pour a little bit more back into our tray that we line with a garbage bag. So that way, when we're done, we're going to pull the garbage bag out. And we'll have a nice clean tray that we can use for another project. and we repeat the process. So come in here, doing another four to 500 or uh, four by four or five by five square foot section. And again, I'm rolling back up into the area that we've already done. And I'm going to go through this floor in a very systematic way. Uh, that way I'm going to ensure that I do not miss any spots at all. So I'm just going to go section by section back and forth across the floor. I can come in here like this. I can change direction. I'm going to pay particular attention right here where my section here meets up with the section here that I don't have a seam showing. So I'm going to roll this back this way. And all the way through. All right, perfect. On to the next section. Again, there's that effort that I'm putting into this, putting pressure 
on the roller, making sure that I get this out really, really thin. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna roll back all the way into this previous section. Not adding any more material, but just rolling it out some more. Time for some more material in the tray. And this, um, this high wear urethane in the full satin finish it just um it just gives a beautiful beautiful sheen to the floor you can see the difference uh, where we have just raw epoxy here it's much glossier then we go into this full satin finish but it's just such a warm rich looking finish and on top of that it is so durable so scratch resistant it's designed for high wear um, surfaces your retail stores, your um, high traffic areas, uh, your garage floors, very chemical resistant and uh, super, super durable. So we're gonna continue on into another section here. this way. All right, so I think you get the idea. I think that uh, we're going down really thin. We're uh, applying it um, at about 500 square feet per kit. We're overlapping sections. We're not scared to uh, overroll the product. If we need to get up in it, we can put our spike shoes on and roll it, but we're going section by section. We're blending them all together. We're using our 18 inch roller and it's producing this really beautiful, beautiful satin finish. I'm gonna go ahead and finish out the floor. We'll come back tomorrow and we'll show you the final result. So we set out to create a surface that would have the look of really polished and refined and honed concrete. And I think we're able to achieve that look using our silver designer metallic epoxy. Now this is just one color. We took the alcohol and we created a little bit more modeling on the floor as you would see if it was a hard troweled slab of concrete. And then when we put that satin finish high wear urethane on top, it really just finished off the whole look of this floor, giving us just this rich luster across the floor at, while at the same time adding that super, super high durability. So this is just one way that you can use our designer metallic epoxy uh, systems. And again, just one color gives you this awesome look. Uh, you can find this kit as well as any others, including our countertop kits, on our website at www.epoxyplus.com. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us there as well. And if you have any questions or comments, you can also uh, leave them down below. And we thank you for watching.